Hi, I'm James Cathrall, co-founder of Cathrall Audio. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to create cool audio effects in MainStage. Now, when it comes to MainStage, most people immediately think about its capabilities with software instruments. But MainStage is very capable of doing some creative things with audio processing as well. Let's get right into how it works. I'm going to start inside of my MainStage concert. I'm going to create a new channel strip, but instead of creating a software instrument channel strip, I'm going to create an audio channel strip. These are really similar to software instrument channel strips, except instead of a software instrument, we have an audio input right here. But we still have our area for audio effects. Here's our sends. Here's our output. I don't have pan because this is a mono channel strip right now. Here's my levels, and then here's my fader, my mute, and my solo button. At the moment, we don't have many options, so the next thing we need to do is set up our audio interface. We already did an in-depth discussion on audio interfaces, and you can check out that video right here. I'm going to use this Yamaha TF1 as my audio interface for this video. I'll connect my MacBook Pro to the USB port on the back of the mixer that says to host. Once I've done that, I'm going to open up the preferences in my main stage concert. I'm going to go to the audio tab. And then for audio output and input, I want to select the Yamaha TF. And also for this specific mixer, I need to make sure my sample rate is set to 48 kilohertz because the Yamaha TF doesn't support any other sample rates. The audio interface will allow me to plug in microphones and process it through MainStage. Now you might be asking, why do I need MainStage to process the audio when my mixer already does that for me? And that's a great question. Let's go over all the benefits that it provides you. First off, the built-in audio effects. The Yamaha TF does have some capabilities that I would describe as just okay. There's an EQ, a compressor, a gate, plus two effects buses with a few different selections. And like I said, it's okay. This isn't a top of the line expensive mixer or anything. It's a prosumer level mixer that does its job well. However, inside of MainStage, you'll get much more control and a lot more options. After you pay the $30 purchase price, you have access to a wide array of audio effects. There are multiple options for EQs, compressors, reverbs, delays, distortion, modulation, and there are even classic hardware emulation plugins. It's ridiculous when you actually look at how many different options you have and how well they work. And that's not even the end of it. You can also use all of your favorite third-party plugins too. Your Fab Filter, Universal Audio Waves, and any of your other go-to plugins. At that point, you're really only limited by the processing power of your computer. The next benefit is the ability to turn the main stage concert into your scene management. So you can avoid dealing with the pain of using scenes on the TF and have patch changes act as different scenes. This makes it a lot easier to make volume balance adjustments and change effects as well. We'll talk a bit more about that one once we get everything put together. All right, let's start getting it all set up. I'll be using the Yamaha TF for this video, but the principles of this will stay the same for other digital mixers. Especially if you're using the Behringer X32 or the PreSonus series mixers, this will all be relatively the same. The first thing I'll do is plug in my microphone into channel one of the mixer. You can pick whatever channel you want based on your ensemble or band setup. All right, I'm gonna go back to my main stage concert and create an audio channel strip. But this time, let's spend a little bit more time in this pop-up window. On the left side, we have our input. I want this to match the input channel that I'm using on my mixer. So I plug my mic into input one, so I'm gonna select input one. Next on the right side is our output. This is where it gets a bit tricky. The output channel you pick is where main stage will send the audio back to the mixer. I wanna select a channel that is empty and available. For this setup, I'll select channel two. Let's look at a couple more things on this pop-up window that are pretty convenient. Down here at the bottom, I have number of channels. So I can change this number. If let's say I have eight microphones that I need to set up in my main stage concert, I can type eight, and when I hit create, it'll automatically create eight of those channel strips for me, instead of me needing to go back to this pop-up window eight separate times to create those channel strips. And then if I'm doing that, I can go over here where it says input, and below that I have this box that says ascending. And what that means, if I have that checked, when I hit create, and it creates those eight channel strips, it's gonna start with input one, and then the next channel strip it creates, it'll set it as input two. And then the next one is input three, and so on and so forth, all the way until number eight. I can do the same thing for the output, but I'm just gonna leave it as output two and not do the ascending, and we'll talk about why in a second. 
Let's go back to one channel strip and hit create. That's it for the main stage setup for now. Let's go back to the mixer. I'll start at channel one where my mic is plugged in. At the top of the channel strip on the touch screen is the channel head. This shows the gain meter, but more importantly right now, we're gonna look at the top of this menu. We have three different options, which tells the mixer where the audio is going to come from. For channel one, we wanna set this to input. This means it'll use the XLR inputs on the back of the mixer. Now for channel two on the mixer, we'll be using that as our return from main stage. This channel will be set to USB. This tells the mixer to take the audio from the device that's plugged into the USB port on the back. There's one last step for the mixer. We need to pull the fader down for channel one and leave the fader for channel two at zero or unity. If you're familiar with sends and returns on audio gear, you can think of channel one as the send to main stage and channel two as the return. Or another way to think of this is with channel one as our dry signal and channel two as our wet signal. I want channel one turned all the way down so that I'm only hearing the processed signal from main stage. I don't wanna hear the original sound coming from channel one. If you have multiple mics, you'll need one channel for each microphone you're using since you need to plug the XLR cable into the channel on the back. But you don't necessarily need another return channel for each mic. I can set each channel to output two in main stage. But that means when I'm balancing levels during rehearsal, any changes I make to channel two will affect every mic coming through main stage. So for example, if you're a marching band and you have two soloists playing at the same time, you might want to use two different return channels from main stage so that you can balance them separately during a performance. If you're doing that, you'll need to change the output channel in main stage and then change that same number channel to USB on the mixer. So let's say I'm using channel two right now and I wanna have a separate one, I'll change channel three to USB. And then on my outputs, I'll have one audio channel strip output to two and the other audio channel strip will output to three. So now, even if you're using a different mixer, these principles will generally be the same. You want one channel to be the normal XLR input and you want the other channel to be the USB input that will accept the audio data from main stage. Now, let's see a practical application of this setup. I'll use this mic and put a pretty obvious effect on this channel. Let's start with a reverb. If you wanna learn more about setting up reverb in main stage, you can check out our video on it right here. So I'm gonna go over to the send, I'm gonna to go to bus, let's go to bus one. I'm gonna to go to settings at the top, go down to reverb, large spaces, halls, and then let's go with fine hall. And I'm gonna double click this. Let's put this at zero, just so it's pretty obvious. And here we go, check one, two, check one, two. That's my reverb effect. The other added benefit is the ability to turn mics on and off with patch changes. Normally when you do this, the audio from the mic will stop completely, but in this video, I have a separate mic recording my voice up here, so you'll still hear me talking. My second patch doesn't have any audio channel strips though, so when I change the patches, the reverb will stop. So let's check that out. Here's patch number one, and now I'm gonna go to patch number two, and now that reverb and the whole thing is gone. This function is what allows you to treat the patch changes like scene changes on a mixer. I can have patches set up with different effects and volumes for different sections of the show or songs in your set. If I want this audio channel strip on other patches, the best thing to do is to copy and paste the original channel strip to the other patches that you wanna hear the microphone on. Let's look at one more thing inside of the main stage preferences. I'm gonna to go to the audio tab, and at the bottom it says silence previous audio patch. And then we have this drop down menu. Right now it's set to immediately. If I click on it, I have a bunch of different amounts of time that I can select. So if it's set to immediately, as soon as I change patches, it's gonna cut off that audio signal right away. But let's say maybe you're doing a patch change at the end of a phrase, and you still want a little bit of that audio tail to hang over as you go to the next patch. You can determine that length right here so that it doesn't instantly cut off and sound awkward or unnatural when you change patches. You can get as creative as you want with the effects you use in main stage. Blue Knights did their famous snare drum solo back in 2017.
and Bluecoats also created a similar effect with their snare line in 2021. So now here are just a couple ideas to get you started. You can use a phaser to create some interesting sounds. Down here with the phaser, I'm gonna go with mono. And then I can go with something interesting. Let's go like right here. And test that out. And here's what that sounds like with the phaser in with my voice. You can also use a vocoder. Vocoder is a little bit more complicated because you have to use a software instrument. Here, main stage comes with a vocoder. We have to sidechain that audio channel and make sure it's using a vocal signal, but then it can create a sound kind of like this. And here's my voice with the vocoder. All right, so that's how you set up main stage with your mixer to be able to process audio. To me, the main benefits are the access to the wider range of effects inside of main stage and the ability to turn mics off and change levels with patch changes from my synth player. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.